Sarah Buckland and Angela Knight are both higher level TAs. They work in primary schools in Bristol and over the next two days they are going to observe each other teaching small groups of children. We're going to join them and at the end of the two days, with the help of a teacher, reflect on strategies for group teaching. Froonbank Junior School, situated on the outskirts of Bristol, has some 200 children drawn from the local area. For the last three years, Sarah has been a school governor and two years ago took up a position as a higher level TA. I deliver ICT and PE throughout years three to six. I work with small groups and we do intervention programmes for numeracy and we have just started emotional literacy groups. I work alongside the SENCO and with class teacher as well and we identify the children that just maybe need that little extra, just a little bit of confidence in their knowledge and the focus at the moment is numeracy, um, still continuing with some literacy support. Now we were working on this. So who can tell me what this sum is? Sam, are you thinking really hard? Can you remember? Merwin? Georgia? Division. Division. That's Today right. it's Angela's now. turn to observe Sarah teaching. Her first group are Year 4 children, who she is helping with numeracy. We were talking about where if we've got something and we're going to... Let's have hands up, let's not call out, Lindsay. You really need to know the group dynamics of your group. So knowing the children is the first thing. You need to know the special needs, um, if you have any behaviour issues that you might need to deal with in a small group situation. Follow procedure as well. Be confident in your school's procedures. So for example, you know, you know you're reinforcing what the teacher is working on. That's very valuable in any group session. Having the relationship with your teacher to know that if you have to send them back, there's going to be consequences. And that really helps and that really secures and makes it a working environment for the children. What can you see? There's what? How many groups of what number there, Lindsay? Three. Three groups of five. Well, to see them smile at you, to um, know that they've achieved something, however small, and that you've actually been a part in that. You've, you've shared a moment in their life. And I think that's so precious. It just makes everything worthwhile. Sam, well done. You've worked really hard. Sarah has received a lot of encouragement from the school staff and head teacher, but becoming an HLTA has not been without its problems. Before HLTA status came around, Sarah did work with groups of children and did work with individual children. And when it came to doing PPA and continuing the group work, there was a great deal of resentment from those children because they'd always seen her as being theirs. And they found it difficult to adjust to that. Well, you're not running round with it like this, tied up, it's dangerous. But using HRTAs and TAs for group work benefits them immensely. They build up very good relationships on the whole with the children who want to succeed for them. And I know they get a great deal of satisfaction out of seeing the, the children enjoy. So it becomes um, quite a nice little cycle of building on and moving on all the time. As part of her new job, Sarah also line manages the other TAs in the school. Today she is observing a colleague teaching a science lesson. I now have to ensure that at the beginning of the term their timetables are meeting the needs of their not only the children they work with but their teachers. That can be difficult sometimes as communication in school isn't always the best. But um, it's enjoyable, I'm really enjoying it. Observing other TAs is great fun. And I think we're all close enough that we're looking at it constructively. People's perception is varied. Some see us as a helper, some see us as an actual teacher. There's no clear definition of what our role is and each individual has a different idea. So the book's called, what's the book called, Ash? What a goal. What a goal, okay then, let's start reading. Let him go in goal, said Rocky. And after the last lesson, Sarah and Angela have an opportunity to catch up on how the day went. I really enjoyed doing the Wellington Square programme. The children seem to love the characters, which I think is so important. And I think, I hope you saw that they've got a good understanding of the um, context of the text. This group, they all struggle with reading. 
they don't have the access to the materials at home quite often and what we've tried to develop with them is a love of reading and to show that it's not just all about being able to do a test, to read to take a test, it's about reading for enjoyment. The activities were really good because it was checking their understanding. They really enjoy the activities, they can link it to the text, they're able to identify the characters, each time you're progressing you're reinforcing what they've previously learnt. It's fun, it's usually lively, There's, we can often go into the ICT suite as well, which they really enjoy. And they are transferring their skills, they learn in a small group, into the classroom, which is really, really good. So Sarah, how do you think your new session went this morning? It really worries me with those children. They're lacking the confidence in class and that's what we're trying to work on, is to encourage them to feel that it's safe enough to make that mistake if they have got the wrong answer. And also, you were checking all the time their understanding, checking their answers, and I noticed one little girl was using um, addition instead of division. Mm -hmm. And you, you didn't just tell her what she was doing, you gave her a reason why. Right. So, really so good. yeah, that's that's what I'm trying to develop is to ensure that the children are mm. um, have, having the situation where they can have the confidence mm. to make the mistakes, and it's mm. very easy to sort of tell them what they're doing wrong, and I want them to learn for themselves, and then to feel confident that they are able to correct themselves. The next day, some five miles across Bristol, Sarah joins Angela at Emerson's Green Primary School. Today, Angela is teaching literacy and sound discovery to small groups of Year 4 children, followed by Spanish to a whole class of Year 1 pupils. Well, no day is the same because I work right the way through each year group. So I could come in and be in one class for 20 minutes, have to go fly off and work in another class for another hour, go back to my room, have a group for ALS or springboard maths, come back into another class, or maybe in the afternoon cover PPA time. So it's very, very busy. OK, hands down. Mrs Knight's group, you're going to go and work with Mrs Knight. She's going to tell you exactly what you're going to do today. So if you'd like to go and find a seat with Mrs Knight now. You really get to know the children personally. They tell you all about their life. They respect you. Um, when you're working with them, you can see that the progress that they're making. They really enjoy what you're doing because you've got lots of resources for them and you can see them progress. You can go into the classroom and you can see them using strategies that you're teaching them. Can you tell me where it was? Where was it, Morgan? At the circus. At the circus, well done. So that's all where. I have a really good relationship with the other teachers. I can always get advice from them. If I'm finding um, behavior difficult, I can get strategies from the class teacher that usually works with them. Um, if I need help with resources, any you know good ideas just got to ask them and they're always ready to help. And at the end of the lesson, Angela's group has a chance to present its work. On the sentence, we had to say why, and when we had said why, we put that like that. And then we had to say what happened. Well, then we, we did, um, we were sentence detectors, and we had to find out, out of this sentence, what question word was missing. As well as teaching small groups within the classroom, Angela also has her own room for group work. Today she is using sound discovery as part of the literacy programme. We're going to check our sounds again, see if we can remember them. Start with the first that we did last week. Because I absolutely love sound discovery, um, I would like to develop it in the whole class situation, so starting down from reception and following it through, you know, because there has been studies in Bristol of how this has improved reading and spelling. What word does it make? What can you hear? K. Ah. Shh. Cash. Cash. So what have you missed out? Crash. Crash. R. Fantastic. Where does it need to go? You need lots of resources so the children are completely involved. They're doing something so they haven't got time to actually misbehave because they're really involved, they're moving around and sort of playing games and they don't realise that they're actually learning. Ship. Oh, well done, Danny. That one's yours. I think that the high-level teaching assistant qualification has really benefited the teaching assistants themselves. It's not just benefiting school. I think it's helped them with their career structure. I think they feel much more valued. It's given them opportunities to develop in ways um, that perhaps we wouldn't have 
done before. So I think they are feeling much more supported than perhaps they were um, in previous years. And for the last lesson of the day, Angela is teaching Spanish to a class of year one children. As with her group work, the emphasis is on fun while learning. Does he speak Spanish? Pedro dice tocar. Okay, that means Pedro says touch. The face is just lit up when so, you brought him out. <laughs> I think he's really good because he's got his beard and it's a bit, <laughs> a bit Spanish. <laughs> it was another way, wasn't it, of them remembering? Yeah. La boca. The sound discovery. I thought that was fantastic, the way that you identified the sounds. You then manipulated them. You then applied them. Mm. Then you also did handwriting skills. And you made it fun in the meantime as well, which was just brilliant. I just wanted to take part myself. Thank you. <laughs> I think that's the, the, the children don't realise that they're learning because they're having fun with games. They're moving the sounds around. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. And then the splats at the end. Yeah. <laughs> Shop. Well done, Daniel. The whole class session, Angela, when you were in with the teacher, I thought the hands worked really well because they could just see then where they were going, what they were missing, mm. and the children were then able to uh, extend their complex sentences and yeah. understand what they were meant to be doing. It was fantastic, linking it with the objectives, brilliant. And with a teacher on hand to give a few tips, Sarah and Angela can reflect on how their new role has affected their group work. Since becoming a higher level teaching assistant, you've been doing a lot more whole class teaching. Um, has that impacted on your group work at all? I find with the confidence that it's really boosted my own belief in myself. Um, the strategies that I've used with the whole class, I have brought them into the group sessions as well. And likewise with the group sessions, I've used many of those with the whole class. And just really helped me to do my job more professionally, really. Mm. I find that because um, that we do so many resources for our groups, that we know that that really works because the children are really involved so you don't get the behaviour problems so I found that when I'm doing my teaching if I prepare lots of resources and lots of things with children to be doing you know I'm not getting the behaviour problems. What particular behaviour management strategies do you find work well? Yeah I think we've got a really good relationship with the children that we work in groups I think sometimes more than what you probably would mm -hmm. because we get that more intimate relationship you're on a more one-to-one -one basis. Yes, and so they, they tell you things, you know, about at home and things. And so, and I think it's, it's easier for us to remember because we haven't got a whole class of children Definitely. to remember everything just, they say, just yes. those group of children. It's very important to stick to policies and procedures as well, though, with them. They need to know mm. the expectation yeah. from us is the same that it's going to be from their class teacher and from any other adult in school. Mm. And having spent the last two days teaching and observing each other, both Angela and Sarah agree that becoming an HLTA has been worthwhile. Well, I really do feel if I can do it, but anybody can do it. I lack the confidence at the beginning. I didn't believe in myself. It's a lot of hard work, but, you know, the rewards that you get, that you come away thinking, oh, I've done a really good lesson. Once you can overcome the barriers, and that takes a little while, you really feel, it makes you feel good about yourself and you know the children are going to respond to you really well. Thank you.